a welcome to the Rail Brothers, the Bridge Business. Come on, man, big round of applause. Yep, yep, man. Yep. What's going on? Yes, sir. Hey, y'all remember the last time we saw each other? Okay. Man, I can't recall. We was at a fight, man. I was trying to get on your show. We was at a fight, honestly, and I was talking to you, but uh, I don't know. We just never kept in contact. That was the last time me seeing you. Oh, okay. Uh, at, a box, was, at a boxing event. Damn, I wonder which one. I was thinking when we came to Flint and it was that charity basketball game. That it, was. It might have been. Yep, it was that. I played where, where Snoop and stuff was. Yep. Snoop That's was where, a coach. I think it was. Yep, yep. And, and I, I and I, was. I was a coach horse. You should have saw me, man. I should have. I, I should have suited up. You know what I mean? But I, but I didn't do it, man. Let me start with that, then, man, fellas. How, how is it in Flint? Because at that time we did the charity game. You know, the, the infant. You know, people were really trying to collect water and, and supplies and resources because of what was going on in the pipes. And yep. what's, what's it like now out there? Uh, I still stay in Michigan. I stay what ten minutes from Flint, so. It's the same. Uh, it's not. It still haven't been fixed. Uh, that's what people probably misinterpreting right now that the water has been fixed. No, it's still messed up. We still need mm -hmm. help, and it's not just water. It's with everything. Uh, we just need to bring Flint back as a whole, man. As a you know, a whole state. You know, I think Michigan and the whole entire need to come together and, and get it back because Flint was one of the cities that you know, that families wanted to move to and, and create and create something because of GM. And now it's just ran, you know, they left us and forgot about us, especially with this water incident. It's a, uh, it's been going on since April 14, 2014. And it's, it's kind of sad that nobody, that it haven't been fixed yet. Uh, I, I'm assuming um, they're starting off with the colleges because they're building up Flint, excluding the North side where we grew up. Um, it seems like they're pushing everyone back toward the north side and kind of putting or well, they're actually putting millions into the into the downtown area, Kenner University, um, U of M. Um, so they are working and then downtown Finn's looking really good as well. So they are working on it. Um, so I assume that they're going to uh, handle the water situation next, but we can't be too sure. We do need the help for sure. So. If you're still looking uh, forward to helping out Flint, then by all means do that. We definitely need that help, but um, in due time, it'll all come along, I'm sure of that. Okay, I, I like that y'all speak yeah. out, man. I, I know like even more recently with all the civil unrest we see in the country, like I'm listening to you, Anthony and Andre speak out. A lot of athletes start really talking about, you know, social injustice and a lot of athletes start talking about inequalities and you saw a lot of folks marching with black lives matter and then you saw a lot of resistance from a lot of pundits that said athletes should shut up and dribble or uh, be quiet and punch you know uh what, what's been your take on that andre did you always want to use your platform to to bring awareness to certain issues that was always my mission um i see myself in ali's light um and all I need is that platform. Um, granted, I didn't take opportunity of the platform I had at one uh, before, but I'm, I'm doing that now. My goal is to actually work with children because um, we all know that by this time, 37 years old, they're the future, man. Uh -huh. You know, I see, I've see i seen kids growing up, you know, a generation uh, uh, over us, and now they're grown and they're, and they're, they're powerful. You know what I'm saying? It's, like, it's unreal to see how fast these kids develop and they grow. And I want to be able to, to provide an outlet for them to continue to shine, man. And that's exactly what Flint needs. And uh, every other hood or black community that's really lacking. Um, I just currently watched a session on youth sports and the price rising of youth sports. Youth sports is an industry now. Yeah. Like it's crazy. Like they're bringing, the, they're raking in uh a big billions of dollars overall yearly uh, with youth sports, but that's at the same time driving out the people with without the means, you know. So that's an issue right there. And I want to be that guy that makes sure the youth, our future, was who's going to lead this country after we're going, uh, has a way to express themselves, man. So that's my mission. I appreciate that. And you want to build on that, or is, is it, yeah, you're, you're... Uh, definitely. Uh... I mean, I started a foundation uh, because of cancer, but my foundation is to help, help kids in the inner city too, 
find, you know, and find like I fight, find a a cure for cancer. Mm -hmm. Uh, but just just the community, man. I want to give back as much as possible. I do turkey drives every year. I donate to to charities, even though I have one. But it, it's just it's just helping the kids that's under you because th that's who that's who the next generation is. That's who is going to run the world after we're dead and gone. So mm -hmm. we definitely have to look out for them and, and, and set a a positive mindset on what their future will be. Mm. Mm. Okay. So talking about the kids and things like that, both of y'all prize fighters, do you have any advice for young prize fighters that's coming up saying, you know, things that y'all should look for, things that y'all learned that, you know, maybe that y'all could use the platform, like you said, maybe things that they could learn from you guys. Like, do you have any advice for these younger fighters that's coming up? Uh, yeah, just, 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 uh, just staying focused, man. Don't don't mm -hmm. ever let nobody tell you, you can't. Uh, if they tell you, you can, it's because they couldn't. Uh, so just keep pushing it and keep going to to your dream. And if that guy got that to do with boxing or anything in life, uh, you know you can't you can't just give up. Uh, I think I I saw uh, Denzel say, "If you fail, fail big." You know what I'm saying? That's what you want to do because you mm. learn and you got to learn off what you fail doing if you don't learn it does no good so if you fail fail big and definitely man um so our grandfather raised up 10 to 11 years old man 9 and 10 actually boxing and when we got to that young adult stage it was just like okay it's, it's getting closer to this part where i can walk out of this sport quit and do what i want to do mm. you know um so uh, i want I want the cats coming up just like my nephew right now. Uh, a couple of uh, a cousin and nephew fight around right Leon Lawson and Darion Lawson. You got to really stay out the way in these times, man, because what is it, 18 to 17, really, to 22, 23 years old, you know everything, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> and that's mm -hmm. the biggest issue. You know too much, you know? So um, in truth or in turn, stay out the way. Focus on your dream. Keep chasing it. You knocking on the door. All you got to do is open it, man. And this is the biggest time for distractions to hit. So just make sure you stay out the way and stay focused on your game and uh, and, and continue to grow. And pretty soon, you'll, you'll, you'll get your chance in the limelight. Hmm. Love it, man. I love catching up with y'all, man. You know, Anthony, I just saw your last fight. You know, I want, <laughs> I, want I, I, I was... Man, I done seen you in some dog fights, man. You know I'm a big mm. fan of yours, brother. Yeah. I, and and I, I just feel like that super middleweight division is is so is is valuable now. Yeah. You know, you got you got that 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 guy in your division now, Canelo, you know the, Canelo, the for sure. money bag, man. Um and I know that this fight was important for you. How, how do you rate your performance? What do you, what, what, how do you assess this past fight? Uh, I, I honestly thought I won. I thought I did enough. Uh, I went in there. You know, it, this is not an excuse. That's why I didn't say it after. But my hand was messed up. Like, it's still messed up right now. Uh, I got a quarter zone shot before the fight, thinking it'd help, and it didn't. But uh, my hand was messed up, and, and that's not an excuse on my performance. I still thought I won a fight. I still mm -hmm. thought I did enough. I think I kept control of the fight the whole time. Uh, kept the guy on his back foot and, and dictated the pace. Uh, I pushed him. He punched when, you know, kind of when I punched. But at the end of the day, you know, it is what it is. I can't control, you know, the decision. I, I only can, uh, you know, go on from here. Uh, my, I don't think I lose, my, lose my place in where I'm at because it was a draw. But uh, like I say, I still I still want to fight. I want Canelo. I want uh, Caleb Plant. I want the I want them champions. Uh, I think I need to do it now before uh, before I get older. I'm 36. I think I'm one of the oldest at the top of the division. Uh -huh. So I, I I need it now. <laughs> you know, give me my shot. So at this point, are you fighting for like the a, a, a legacy or is it about the money? Because you was a champion before. So is it about the money or is it about the, you know, you want a, a legacy, you want to leave with like a, a solid legacy? We do it for money, man. I mean, you do your job for the money. <laughs> Everybody do their job for the money. It's about the money. The legacy will come if it comes. It's about the money. I'm trying to support my family. Uh, I, I, I don't know why people say, oh, it's about my legacy before money. You're doing it for money. Like, that's the only reason you're doing it for. If they didn't pay you, 
you wouldn't be doing it, period. You'll be doing something else. I'm doing it for the money. Uh, my legacy will come when it comes. And that's just the truth. I mean, that's just the truth. You, that, that's, that's just being honest. I love your honesty, man. Yeah, that's just being honest. I mean, you do it for the money. You don't go to work and say, oh, I'm working on this computer for my legacy. You're doing it for money. You're doing it for that paycheck, period, point day. And that's what Floyd said. We in the check cashing business. We ain't in no legacy business. It's a check cashing business. You agree with that, Andre? I mean, so 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 me and my brother like night and day, right? Yeah. Um, but that, but but he's absolutely right. Um, it's 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 great to do what you love, but it's 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 even better to get paid for it, right? So, I look at it both ways, man. We definitely the, the that extra drive, the extra hunger is because we get those big paychecks, you know. But we do want to build a legacy. We do want to leave a name. We do want to leave a mark in the sport. So we go for it all. We put it all on the table, man. Whether you're making ten thousand or ten million, man, in boxing, you're putting your life on the line, you know. So you definitely want to be in shape and you want to put the work in, of and course. you want to get paid for it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, um, the money is a definite for me. Um, my brother is just so blunt and so real, just like y'all here, <laughs> real raw, oh. he's be uncut, you know. Um, and he expressing himself, you know, and that makes a lot of sense. And and like he said, man, we definitely want to get that paycheck, but you definitely want to leave a mark at the same time and want to show that it's not always, always about the money. You know, I mean, so that, of course, it because goes, when it you, goes both ways. It goes yeah. Of course, because when you got a legacy, you got a voice, too, and people will listen to you. Uh -huh. But at the end of the day, you said, am I doing it for the paycheck? I'm doing it for my for the paycheck, right. man. Right now, I, I'm I mean, doing it for like the paycheck. I wouldn't do it if I get, right now, I I'm doing it for the paycheck, paid, and that's it. Like I got two, I got two world championships coming off cancer. Nobody has done that before in life. My legacy is set. Okay. I should be a Hall of Famer just off me coming back from cancer and winning two world championships, period. Mm -hmm. Nobody has ever done that but Daniel Jacobs. Period. Yeah. 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 My legacy is that in general. If somebody say I'm not the only person that needs to say I'm great is me. Okay. I'm great. That's it. That's I the like only that. person that needs to say I'm great. It's me. I like that. Long you know nobody, that. nobody else can tell me that I'm not great. Nobody. <laughs> I love it. Anthony, Andre Durrell, uh, we got him on Bridge Business right here. When I look at y'all, I think of my brother. I got a brother, T. Calloway. That's my older brother, so I'm the youngest. And I remember when we were growing up and we would go places, we were both good at sports. We were both fast on the track. We both looked good. You know, we had a nice mouthpiece, you know, when it came mm -hmm. to talking. But it, he always overshadowed me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He always overshadowed me. It's just his personality was different than mine. Mm -hmm. I, I gave it my all. I always wondered with you guys, because, you know, people used to think you were twins at one point, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and you both fight at the same size. Is that ever an issue, Andre? Like uh, where Anthony, you feel like is overshadowed and vice versa? Mm -hmm. No, you no, know, no. They that always think that I'm Andre. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah like exactly. And. I've grown so accustomed to it. Like people walk up to me and say, congratulations on your fight or whatnot. And I say, thank you. My thing is this, as long as you say one of our names, that's all I care about. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So uh -huh. I'll leave it at that. I mean, you say my name, I'll, I'll be Anthony all day, every day. Now I know you're talking about the Darrell brothers or one half of the Darrell brothers. So that's all I care about in turn. That's most important. Okay. All right. Agreed. Agreed. I want to take it back to Flint growing up. When you guys grew up, how was it growing up in Flint that got your grandfather to want to get you guys in boxing? Y'all was fighting. Did you have uncles and cousins that was around the house and stuff that day? Like, what was y'all doing? Because y'all, you know, both of y'all got that dog in y'all. So. That, did, that, that, that didn't stop us from fighting. That, that's one thing. We just fought each other so much. You know, me and my brother used to rumble every day over video games or whatever it was, man. But generally, it was definitely for the streets. I personally believe that believe that I don't have the person a street personality anyway. I was always that kind, generous kid, you know what I'm saying, growing up. So if I never boxed and I would be a regular employee, hopefully entrepreneur, you know, moving uh in some way. Um but um Anthony for sure needed it, not because of the street life, but dog mentality. He ready to fight anybody doing I mean this boy had a fight with a at a whole family reunion. <laughs> <laughs> And we had to be like 13 or 14 years old, man. This man started to fight with one kid. And by the time I came back with my people, 
it had to be like 12 people surrounding him and he got a stick swinging it at every last one of them, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> keeping them back. So Anthony had no boundaries. He was just a dog his whole life, man. So it was definitely more needed for him. But our grandfather's purpose was to get us out of the streets. He said, get it out your head. The streets is dead. That was his thing. And uh, he found boxing thanks to Muhammad Ali, man. And we've been in ever since, man. So it kept us out of a lot of trouble for sure. I'm trying to think. Did y'all meet Ali? Yeah, I, I was yeah, over we met Ali two thousand five. Over really? twice. Can y'all hear yeah, that? Yeah, two thousand five. We went to his house. We was a guest of honor at his house in Barron Springs, Michigan. Yeah. Yeah. What was that like, man? Tell us about it. <laughs> that was huge. So, so the first time we went, it was just me and my grandfather. Uh, we just finished the tournament. I won, and and we pull up at his house, and I'm like, Ali is not going to answer the door. This is crazy. You know, I'm just sitting there, and it, I, I think like twenty minutes went by. And next thing you know, you see Muhammad Ali driving down the, the parking lot. And I'm just like, oh, my God, is that him? And I saw he, him through the window. And I was like, oh, my God, it's him. 17 at the time. I I, my, I mean, I never smiled so hard in my life. He let us in the gate. We went back up. And uh, we sat with him. You know, we just talked. Renee had the yearbook showing him all the pictures of them growing up. My grandfather met him at 15 and 16 years old. So they was friends until they separated. Ali continued boxing. My grandfather went off to the Army. But my grandfather used to be at his house and, mm. you know, sharing stories about his mother cooking dinner. Ali came to prison. Stuff. Ali came to prison to visit my grandfather. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Really? So, like, and, yep. and, and he was introduced to the whole family by Layla Ali at Ali's funeral. So they were really, really close, man. And um, the second time, that's when we were the guests of honor at this house after I made the Olympic team. And uh, that was a great experience too, man. But that's one of those experiences where I, I smiled from ear to ear. I got tired of smiling, man. It was it was really unreal. Yeah, wow. what an experience, man. Huge experience for us. I agree, man. It, it, it was uh it was one it was mind blowing for sure. Mind blowing. Yeah, my sister was exactly. Go ahead, pickle words. Hey, being from Flint, right? Now, y'all yeah. being from Flint, y'all had to go to Detroit, right? Is Crunk yeah. Gym in Detroit? Yeah. Yeah. So did y'all have to walk in the crunk gym? So you have two two guys that's coming from Flint, Michigan. That's you, the dog. Y'all walking in there with this attitude. Y'all had to walk yeah. in the crunk gym. I heard that was a real serious gym. You had to really. Can we cuss on here? Yeah. yeah. You could curse. <laughs> they couldn't fuck with us. <laughs> they couldn't fuck with us. <laughs> we walked. We walked in that gym. <laughs> And we ain't had to say a damn thing. They already knew who we were. They were telling they you, hey, it wasn't no hype on it. Like, yo, it's going to be some tough dudes in there. No. No. I mean, oh. at the end of the day, we had great competition. Like, they were, it was good sparring. But uh, I fought a couple of crunk guys. I ain't going to say no names because, I mean, we're good friends. But uh, I won every time, man. There was no... You Anybody... Know they, like we, we was the kings with. of Michigan, man. We was yeah. growing up. It wasn't, yeah. it, they couldn't fuck with us, man. I'm telling you. They couldn't mess with us. <laughs> they couldn't mess with us. <laughs> And then, it, no, and then it, was, it was that Detroit Flint thing, too, going on, right? You know, it wasn't a big thing, though. No, I mean, if anything, we had more problems with the A-Rabs. I've actually fought a guy named Muhammad Ali before, but he was an A-Rab. So we beef Arab. with him. Arab. They don't like me. Arab. Arab. Yeah, or, or whatever. But uh, uh, but um, <laughs> the Black Cats, man, we was cool with all of them, man. We was like family. You know, but the, it was the Arabics we had more beef with in Detroit than anything. Yeah, it was. Other than that, there was no Flint We still Detroit whooped them, too. You whooped yeah. everybody? Come on, man. Yeah. You can't say, like, who was in the gym that you didn't fight that we would know? I mean, him, my brother. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, you got to understand, right. man. We was doing, yeah. we was going to shows everywhere. We was going yeah. to shows in Florida, Ohio. We would drive across the country, New York, everywhere it's to fight, fight people. So we was just better. Our, yeah. our competition was just better, even at a younger age. And anybody that was from Michigan would stay in Michigan and fight the same people over and over again where we can go out and get experience from other people. And, and it was over. We were just better. So y'all y'all was fighting like, you know, like fight club events, like unsanctioned events? or was No, it, all, it, it was uh, amateur. Uh, so it would be sanctioned events. But my grandfather would drive us, man, everywhere just yeah. to fight in shows in, in, in St. Louis and like I say, New York, we'd go to Mer every, man, everywhere. To think we, about we it. We drove across really, the country to Colorado before from my big brother just yeah. to just to fight, man. It was that's what we that's what he wanted us to do, and we did it. And and, and it's fairly easy to find out how to uh info on a, a show fight or any kind of club fights going on because of the internet now. But back then you didn't, so how he even found out about these shows was unreal to me, but 
you know, he sent us here and there, man, everywhere. I got 236 amateur fights, man. So damn, uh, that tells you a lot, man. He took us everywhere to fight. Man, we was fighting almost every weekend. Hmm. I, I read somewhere. I read somewhere that you guys don't even study tape on your opponents. I don't. It, it, it ain't fun. You know, you look at him for a second, though. Like, if you, it's, say we got a mat meet up. I'll sit down in the beginning of the camp and I'll watch about, I don't know, five or six rounds, anything I can muster uh, watching a fight. But I figure out his throwing points and I leave it at that, man. It's, it's really hard to watch. Wow. Yeah, I never, I, I, I watch, I promise I'll watch two or three rounds, man. That's yeah. it. Like, because yeah. how you come out the first three rounds is how you going to fight. If you watch the first three rounds, that's it. Like you, if you can, and then if you in the if you in shape anyway, and then your mind said that like you can't mess with me, man. Like you can't yeah. beat me. It's that's over, it. like bro. That's let's just key. go in there and fight. Like my talent mm -hmm. gonna outweigh your yo whatever you got for me anyway. Mm -hmm. so my my question to you, Anthony, and bo bo for both of y'all is um, how important is your corner? Anthony, would you be in a, you know, you get cut a couple of times, you had a couple of headbutts, you got, yep. you know, cut a couple of times. How important is it to have a, a, a real corner, especially with you, a cut man? Like, how hard is it to, you know, figure out, like, you need a surgeon, like, someone to cut you had, you needed, like, a surgeon, you needed just a, you know, you didn't need a regular guy. How hard yeah, is it? It, 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 it is very important, man. The, the cut man I had, I don't think he was really that good. I mean, he's good, you know, but he wasn't for me. He couldn't stop my bleeding. And that's what a cut man is for. You got one job, and that's to stop bleeding. What's up, boss man? Or stop the swelling or anything. And he just couldn't do it. Yeah, especially my last fight. I thought I was winning my last fight, but I couldn't see. Because blood was constantly going in my eyes every round. Uh, but, you know, uh, it is very important to have a, a, a hell of a cut man, a hell of a corner. Because what you can't see on the inside, they can on the outside. And they can tell you, or they can fix it, and, and, and so you can go in there the next round and get it done. Mm -hmm. uh, that that's yeah. I always find that fascinating. Like I, I remember watching the old school fights in the seventies. Like when I was a kid, I you know I, I got to see actually I got to see Muhammad Ali fight Larry Holmes, Leon Spinks. You know, and I would watch all those old school fights and see how the cut person was right on top of them immediately, and see how things have changed over the years. Like, has technology helped the, the corner at all? Like, or is it still the same methods to, to stop a cut? I think it's still the same method. You only can use a certain medicine and Vaseline. Right. That's it. Like, you can't mm -hmm. use nothing else. There's uh -huh. no technology in the corner. It's just yeah, you, it's your cut man, and it's, it's it. his equipment. No iPhones, no, <laughs> no, 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 no YouTube, no YouTube University on cuts. <laughs> hey, 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 Andre, let me ask you this, man. I, I, I really had you. I lost some money in the Super Six because of you, bro. I just want to say that. Mm. You don't owe so me sorry. nothing. You don't owe me. So I had, I had my you man. and my. You know, I'm from Oakland, so I had you and Andre. I thought you guys were gonna be, um, uh, you know, the final match. You know, mm. and I, and I, I'm. I remember watching the Abraham fight, you know, and and seeing that man hit you in the back of your head or mm -hmm. while you were down on your knee, mm -hmm. you know, and we talk about <clears throat> being hurt. You know, usually we talk about people being cut, you know, but when you get and, and he, he eventually got disqualified. And then mm -hmm. I remember afterwards, folks thought you were over exaggerating the injury. Mm -hmm. Um, what 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 happened and what do you remember from it? Um, getting up. <laughs> I, don't remember much of, I honestly don't remember much of the fight until I, in, until I watched it. But all I know is I shut him out, man. I did a one hell of a job, a great performance. And he hit me while I was down, man. And that's the thing people tend to forget or they kind of bid on, on what he said, you know, uh, after the fight, he was faking it or whatnot, what he had said. And people tend to forget that like, he was one of the hardest hit men in, in, in boxing that day. So um, if I played out a shot that I couldn't see, even when I was down, then I mean, shit. I mean, I, I'd be able to take any punch he threw standing up. So all of a sudden when I get hit on the floor, he don't hit hard no more than he didn't hit me. Like it was the craziest thing in the world. But, and it was actually a very depressing for me dealing with that because I never got ridiculed in the sport until that time. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was a really, really difficult time for me, man, getting through I didn't know how to process that. You know, I really didn't. Um, I was young and um, I wish I had, you know, got to just decided to continue on 
and I couldn't. There was no way I could continue in the right mind. So yeah. it was very from the stop. But I still wished I had just for the sake of what I went through verbally through, you know, from the from the crowd. I don't even say fans no more, man, because it's really a mob, man. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? They love you one minute and the second and the next they don't. And I understand that, man. That's boxing and it's pretty much every other sport. But um um, that was a difficult time for me, man. Um, I'm how, glad it's going and over with. But. How did you, what, what tools did you use to get through it? Because it, it felt like to me after that fight, it, it was, a, it felt like a slump time for you. You know, and people don't, they don't let you forget that shit. You know what they I mean? Don't. And, and the, lo- the love-hate relationship with boxing mm-hmm. fans, they love you today. You you lose, they they don't, you know, all of a sudden you trash. What, yeah. did, what did you do? Yeah to help you process through that? Did you meditate? Did you, right. did you smoke yeah. weed? Did you, well, like, what did you do? <laughs> like I said, like I said, I was young, man. Um, I, I got over it, you know what I'm saying? There was nothing in particular. You just get over it. It's just like when somebody dies or you lose a job, uh, um, your girlfriend leave you, it's gonna hurt for a minute and then eventually you get over it and it makes you tougher in turn. You know, um, and that was a situation that just built a, a, a tougher shell for me, um, along with many others in this roller coaster of a sport that I'm in um, or I've been through, you know, but uh, nothing in particular, man. I just finally got over. I just finally said, you know what? It's not about what the crowd thinks, it's about what I think, you know what I'm saying, about myself. And that's just how I got over it. You, you, you really, um, did you really pull out the tournament because you didn't want to fight? Andre Ward? Not at all. Negative. You know okay. what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> definitely take that off the table. That was something we were actually looking forward to. We had conversations on the phone. There was no problem there, me and Andre Ward. You know, um, a simp- simple plan, I couldn't continue. What the doctor said, whatever, is, put it like this, the, the, the crowd knows uh, what he said more than what I did. All I was mm-hmm. told is I can't perform, and so I didn't. And left it at that, man. You know, I had a concussion. I couldn't continue, and that was that. That was that? Okay, yeah, that so was you that. wasn't avoiding the fight? Not okay. at all. I was actually looking forward to fighting him somewhere down the line. I thought it would happen. My career didn't go like I wanted it to, and it never happened, you know? So it it just is what it is, you know? Um, I wish they had it for sure. That was nothing I was def- uh, that was ducking or running from. That's un- mm-hmm. that's unreal. You can't call yourself a fighter if you're willing to uh, – if, uh, if you can turn your back on a fight, you know what I'm saying? That's what we do. Okay. Yeah. Hey, in 2004, Andre, you, you had a fight against um in the Olympics. You won the bronze medal. You had a fight against Triple G. I thought mm-hmm. you had a hell of a fight against him. I was like, wow, this was good. I wish you used that stick a little bit more. I wish you'd yeah. have been to your yeah. corner and used yeah. that stick. Did yeah. you learn yeah. from that fight with the point system? Like, you know, it's about boxing. It's, instead of trying to knock somebody out, it's like a point system? Um, It's nothing to learn, really, when it comes to the point system. You just try to Land as many punches as you can, any way you can. When you're in the Olympics, you see some crazy methods, man. I've seen guys who kind of shadow box in front of you to keep you away just to, at the end, pop you with a jab and then the point will go up. So uh, the point system sucks. It, it it always has, and that's why it's going. That's why it was going from the last Olympics we just saw, you know, because it was it was, it was was trash, really. Um, um, so um, it was nothing really to learn from. Like you said, I could have used my stick more. Um, it was a good fight. You know, he didn't hit as hard as he did professionally. I, just, I didn't know he could track so hard. I fought him twice, actually. We're one and one. I beat him probably two or three months prior uh, in, uh, in Mississippi, and then we fought again in the Olympics. And, you know, he got the victory over here so much. I think I won, but, you know, you can call it how you've seen it. Mm-hmm. I appreciate your honesty because boxers like Floyd will never tell you somebody hit him hard. Or if he does, yeah. it'll be some abstract <laughs> fighter from early in his career <laughs> that you, you kind of don't know. You go, who hit you hard? You know, um, uh, I, I want to ask you, Anthony, you, you and David Benavidez, y'all, y'all had a man. That was a man. What a great mm-hmm. fight. That was an no. awesome fight. You Damn know, that, yeah, man, that was a man. That was an awesome fight. I think you really tested that guy. And I think he's a tremendous He's a tremendous fighter, man. And, and when you look at him as a prospect now, just from your professional opinion of the division, where, where does he stand? Do, do, you, do you think Canelo is avoiding him? I think Canelo avoiding a lot of people. Uh, now, I ain't going to say a lot of people, but enough people. 
Uh, I think he's avoiding Benavides, yes. I think because he's so tall, he's quicker. Uh, he can keep him at bay uh, better. Uh, the people that Canelo is fighting seems like they don't fight the same way they've been fighting uh, for some odd reason. I don't know. I can't tell you that. Uh, it, seems it, ain't like the fix, Canelo, is it? it seems like Canelo is carrying his power from 147 to 75. Why? I don't know. And how? Uh, that's a mystery. <laughs> you know, uh, I guess it's the Pacquiao effect. Uh, uh -huh. no. uh, but, you know, I well, think he's avoiding a couple fighters. Uh, but, you know, I, it is what it is. I guess they call him the uh, face of boxing now. Who knows? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say he's avoiding. I wouldn't use those words. I would just say he's in a position. He's he's in so much of a position of power to be able to pick and choose who he gets to fight. So that's what he's doing more than avoiding. Because I don't believe Canelo was scared of any one person. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Um, he's just in a power to pick. You know, and and that's what he's doing. He's just taking he's taking advantage of his position, and he's carrying his career that way. Mm -hmm. So how did? How did, yeah, whatever. how did that eliminate a goal with you guys? So you fought <laughs> Kyron Davis. Um, Benavides is supposed to fight uh, Ronald Ellis. And then the winners of those are supposed to be able to go fight Caleb Plant. Like, how is that supposed to go? How was that eliminated? Right. I, I don't know how that's go. I wouldn't yeah. go fight David Benavides again. That mm -hmm. wasn't going to happen. Uh, that was just, I don't know why would they have two eliminators. Uh, that was just beyond me, too. Uh, I want to, like I say, I want to fight for a belt, man. That's not, that's not something I'm looking for. David has nothing to offer me. Like I say, he's a great champion. He's a great fighter, but he has nothing to offer me. Why would I go and fight somebody uh, that I just fought for nothing when I could fight one of the champions? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Going after a championship. I'm not going after somebody who offered me nothing. I want a championship. Especially that's, not this, my, that's not my at position. This, at this, at this, at this point in my career. I'm looking for a championship fight. Okay. What's your position, Andre? That's not my position right now. Like, Anthony's in a great position. He has a lot of hype around his name, you know, um, and I'm kind of dwindling. You know, I have to find my way back. And, and we're doing that, uh, quiet as kept. Um, but, um, if, listen, I know exactly how to beat Benavidez, and that'd be the only reason I go back down to 68. Or 65, whatever it is, 68, 65, 68. 68. Um, yeah, 68. 68. Um, that'd be the only reason I go back down to 68 if I had the opportunity to fight him. I'll honestly do exactly what my brother was doing up until he got cut, but I know exactly how to fight David B. I know his weaknesses, man. And I feel I definitely would expose it, man. So if I ever had that opportunity, I'll take full advantage of that. Hey, hey, you know, and I want to, and I, I don't want to get into no, slanderous conversation or anything. I'm yeah. a big fan of Canelo. Um, I watched him move up in the ranks. Me I was too. curious about Pacquiao when he first started moving up in the ranks. We had Pacquiao on the show, and I even asked him, people think you're taking some type of uh, supplement to carry on this strength to different weight classes. You know, how can you be as strong at 147 as you was, you know, 20 pounds ago? Mm -hmm. um, exactly. Canelo, to me, is a different... Thing though, man, that dude, you know, he's been fighting. He turned pro at what, fifteen or something like that, or sixteen? You know, yeah, but you can't carry. So, so you're knocking out. Co but he was can, can't knock yeah. out Kovalov when he's tired, but you can, and you came up from sixty or fifty four, like. But he was on, always man, big. He was always big. Bro. I mean, that don't got nothing to yeah. do with nothing. Pacquiao would yeah, probably been big. We can say the same thing it, about yeah. everybody. Yeah. Mm hmm. So you but don't, your you don't power do don't carry up like that, regardless of who how big you are. You're still coming down. You ain't knock out triple G, but you're knocking out all these 75 pounders and 68 pounders. Like, come on, man. It just don't make no sense to me. He probably he probably I hydrated. Ain't doing too. Nothing. I ain't I ain't yeah. saying he's doing nothing. Yeah. I'm not saying he's he probably... doing nothing, but it's just it's just odd. I personally think Canelo. It's coming down from 200 plus, man. Like, I'm not sure too high in 200s, but uh, he's he's a big boy. Naturally, you can see it in his physique, you know. So is he carrying that up with him? No, I think it's already there. He's actually losing some of that power once he loses all that weight, you know. So we, we see it differently, definitely. 
I think he, Canelo just naturally freakish. Or he, he eating a lot of, a lot of that Mexican no meat, bro. <laughs> that Mexican meat. Or he eating a lot of that Mexican meat. <laughs> Yo, man, yeah. they, they got different kind of cattle down in Mexico. You know what I mean? Yeah. It might Obviously. be, you know, a little different. But, you know, <laughs> yeah. Anthony, people could say something similar to you. You got a lot of knockouts in your career. Mm-hmm. You know, and you fought with cancer and, and came mm-hmm. back as a professional boxer and you still maintain your strength, correct? I mean, I, 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 I've been at the same way my whole career, too. I ain't moved up or moved down. I've been mm-hmm. in the same spot, getting the same knockouts the whole time. I never moved up or moved down. But I mean, a bo- if I got to fight back, I got knocked down my first fight back from cancer. So that'll show you I ain't taking nothing right there. If I'm getting knocked down my first fight, and I, I just wasn't myself. If I was taking some, I would have boosted up then. <laughs> but if, you, if, you're, if you're a boxer, making weight always seemed like that was a problem being a boxer anyway. So him bouncing around with weight like that, you know, 175, 168, he keep moving to 154. He could keep moving around like that. I don't understand how he could move that weight around if like that. If he can make myself. 54 again, I would be I would be highly, highly surprised, man. There, there's no way he can lose that kind of weight without uh, losing a lot of muscle at the same time. So that wouldn't be smart, and I highly doubt he'll ever do that again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I want to go back to even w- having fought cancer uh, and won. What what did yeah. you do? How did you change your? What did you change in your lifestyle? Uh, just like when I had it, uh, I read up on, on on a lot of stuff. Uh, I heard that sweets give it give cancer the sugars and everything that it needs to keep surviving. I slowed down on that. I haven't stopped. Uh, I don't think I can stop at all. Honestly, I, I'm a sweet guy. I I, I love sweets, man. Uh, but I slowed down on it a lot. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and just uh, just eat eating a little bit different. Uh, I don't eat as much uh, fast food uh, because it contains it. But I mean, it it it's really kind of I think a mind thing too. You know, mm-hmm. cancer is, of course. Uh, you got to have your medicine to get through it. Uh, I read a book where a lady had cancer, but didn't go through chemo or radiation. She like read funny things and watched funny stuff and stuff like that. And six months to eight months later, she went back to the doctor and got tested cancer free. So I think it's like a, a, a mindset thing when it comes to it. You got to have a strong mind even when you go through chemo if you got to get get the uh you know the chemotherapy and so you got to have a strong mind to get through it because it was hard that was one of the hardest things i ever been through mm-hmm. and i don't, that I, I couldn't do it again if i had if they told me i had cancer today i wouldn't go through chemotherapy i couldn't do it it's that hard wow Wow. Yeah, wow. It's that hard. wow. You're strong. You're the dog. You you're strong, man. And that's why I love it. Yeah, the- but man, that listen, that's strong, right? Listen, when I say that's hard, yes, that it is, is hard. Man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when you get hard. over some stuff like that, because I was in those treatments, uh, some of those treatments with you, and I saw the struggle, man. But you know, a lot of times, or f- for the most part, you ain't got a sugar coat. It's as simple as this, man. You're the dog. Like Anthony's mentality is different. You mm-hmm. know, so to make it through that, his optimism is going to be through the roof when he's feeling well and it's time to get back to work. So Anthony, in a lot of time, a lot of times he lives right there in the moment. It's just like I'm in the gym. It's time to do work. When it's time to fight, I'm knocking him out. He got that dog mentality. He got that dog spirit. Really, mm-hmm. Anthony just has that spirit in. That's why we call him the dog. Like that name is is so real to the family because that boy is an animal in a lot of aspects and a lot of ways, man. So. It's really just his mentality that did it, man. You know, he just knew he could, and he went through with it, and he had two world championship belts from him. There you go, man. You got to love it, man. You got to love it. Come on. Hey, this question is for both of y'all. When you got your first big check as a boxer, what was the first thing you brought? What else? 40000 for me? <laughs> that was 40, uh, my big, my first big check was 40000 Um, But I would say it was my house. That was $235,000 house that I gave to my mother. You know, she lives in it now in Michigan. So I'm happy I was able to do that for her. But uh, I bought my house and and a nice little Escalade. (laughs) (laughs) For $40,000? Wait a minute. No, no, no. no. My first big, big check. So the first check was $40,000. So 
Man, I don't know what I did with that. You know, no, I'm okay. talking about your first big bag. I'm, I want to talk about your first yeah. big bag check. That's that bag check. I bought, I, yeah. I bought a house and a car too. And I bought a ring. I married my wife. Oh, oh there you go. That was the most valuable thing you bought. How big was the yeah. check though? You dig? How big my was the check? check? My first uh, big check was yeah, nine hundred thousand. Ooh, ooh. Mine was, I think, mine was 1.2, I think. Ooh. Ooh. It was yeah. a party in Flint. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got to pay Uncle Sam, too. Yeah, exactly. You got to pay everybody. Pay Uncle Sam. Yeah. How, how do y'all, uh, from a business perspective, because in between fights, it must be hard. If you don't have a whole lot of money coming in, you got to you gotta manage it. You got to budget it, you know. Um, how have y'all, what, what methods have worked? What kind of investments uh, were you able to make, or yeah. whether? So, so right now, I just closed the deal on some apartments. I got I bought some apartments. I got houses. I got a um, a marijuana dispensary finna go up. Mm -hmm. I got a so I got a basketball gym on my property. Like I rent that out too, and then uh, and then just doing. Commentating, I commentate for Fox too. When yeah. especially when it was open, but. That, that's about it. And I'm in stocks and bonds. You know, I got a mm -hmm. stock person, you know, bonds, all that. And money, you got you to gotta have your money work for you. Yeah, okay. my thing, I do a lot of reading. And I, and I do a lot of reading. And then, uh, uh, I had seven homes when I was in Flint uh, that I was, you know, met some good, some bad. You know, I ended up ultimately selling once I made my trip out here. And I continue real estate investing here, you know. Um, and that's definitely the plan man and that's what i would give to every athlete coming up because this isn't talked about enough man um when it goes when it comes to athletes man we're lottery winners with a skill mm -hmm. with an ability with a talent you know so we win the lottery a lot more than just one time you know but at the end of the day the mentality has to be okay son the mentality has to be what do i do with this money you know uh how do i grow this money like a lot of the times, this is what baffles me the most. I don't want to make this too long, but because I could talk about this all day, you know. Okay. But um, the 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 what baffles me most is college graduates. When you can look at an NBA player that was in college, you know, and eighty percent of them still go broke, or seventy percent still go broke at the end of their career, or uh, uh, NFL players, the the the, the is higher, and then boxers, you know, we don't have that education at all. But what we all don't know about money is, you know, how to spend it or, you know, how to build a relationship with it, man. So that's what it has to be about, man. When you get your first big paycheck, if I had a chance to rewind time, now you're talking about what I did with my first check because I would have told you that out the gate I would have invested it. Mm -hmm. Out the gate. I wouldn't have spent my, my money on no house, no car, no nothing. Probably a car to get around. But it will be very minimal, and I would invest every single dime that I had that I could afford to invest. And, and let that grow and make me more money and live off of my investments. You know what I'm saying? That's how I would do things differently. You know, I spent a lot of money and wasted a lot of dough, but ultimately that's what athletes need to start doing from this point on, man. And everybody in general, when you get a big paycheck, figure out how you invest that's what it, I, grow it. And that's you know? the thing. Like, I think, like, athletes, especially athletes that get a higher lump sum, should be required, man, football, basketball, anything, to take a class on investing your money or what to do mm. with your money mm. instead of giving away. They should be, it That's should be big. mandatory that you yeah. do that because there's so many young people out here that don't know what to do with their, like Patrick Mahomes, he a young boy. Of course he kind of probably know what to do with it now, but that's a lot of money to get somebody that young mm -hmm. and you still don't got, you still like, oh man, I got all this money. Okay, here, you can take this much. You can take this, go do something with it, but we got to know what we doing with it to get that money back. Mm -hmm. mm, I think I it should it. be mandatory for all athletes to take a business class or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Boxers yeah. Union. You know what I mean? Get it popping off. that first. Yeah. yeah. Need that first. Yeah. Yeah. Boxing, yeah. boxing is a barbaric sport just in that aspect alone. It's like every man for himself when it comes to the promoter against the fighters when it comes to the fighters against the promoters when it comes against the managers and everybody coaches everybody. and everybody nobody's responsible for anybody but themselves in boxing man and that's mm. the big thing i think i think we the uh the only sport who've been going for this long i think we've been here before basketball fighting boxing has been 
a long time and we still don't have a union. It's, it, it's crazy to me. I, I just don't understand it. I don't, it, it, I still don't understand it. How yeah. we don't have a union or somebody looking out for us. Somebody like we going into this ring, we can die or we can live and come out with a, a little bit of money. But if you, you go know to what basketball, you go to baseball, football, and football is bad too. But you go to basketball, baseball, and stuff like that. I mean, they get money hand over fist. Mm. That's just honest. We're going in there risking our life to get a real like uh he probably got 30, 40 thousand Richard Patron. Per, uh-huh. I forgot his name. I mean, he, he paralyzed. Richard Colin. Richard Colin. He paralyzed and, and probably fought for thirty, forty thousand dollars. Man, he done. He can't fight again. It should be something where fighters are protected. Period. Yeah. Just really quick, man, because I want you to be able to move on. Um, it should be a criteria when it comes to building a union, and I think this is the issue that boxing has, man. Um, they, they probably think you just got to stamp it on every professional when you say we're going to build a union or we're, you know, we're going to give fighters insurance and the whole nine, you know, um, it has to be a criteria first because anybody can turn professional sway. You can turn professional tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you'd be like, what in the hell is he doing in the ring? You know? So that's the biggest issue is like, you, you give these benefits to every fighter. No, it has to be a certain criteria. We said that as we said that, bar first and then we move on from there but that has to be brought up like they're not even trying so i think this is a dead beat mission anyway you know i think they want boxing to stay as it is right now mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying uh to take advantage of the fighters honestly that's what it is man um but um yeah Damn, that's it would have to be a yeah. criteria it, yeah. it would have to be a certain record or a certain opposition you face for us to see that okay you're in serious business we get you um uh, you know, insured and, and everything else that goes along with that. I like how that sound. Mm-hmm. That's something mm-hmm. that could that's something that could take place because I think you know boxers run boxing. I mean, the boxers got to fight; they got to get in the ring. I mean, somebody got to be a star or something. Why, you know, somebody do, but at the end of the day, you need that big name that's all the way up here, like a Floyd Mayweather, to start it. And Floyd not gonna up. start. Yeah. Just step up. We can't he say that he might. Yeah, you know we can't say that. The idea. Yes, I mean, he's a there. promoter himself. He's trying to get yeah. the money too. It's a lot you of gotta promoters. Put it out there. You gotta, hey. Why? Why boxing? The only one with all these promoters and everything. And, and NBA got one commission. They got the NFL got a commission. NHL, <laughs> NBA, like everybody got one. We got multiple all over. And they they not just gonna cancel everybody out and make one. Right. It's, not, it's not gonna happen. Everybody want to do it. Everybody want their hand in that bag. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, man, we talking with the Durrell brothers. I love this. I love where this conversation yeah. just took us. Um, mm-hmm. I want to ask you, Anthony, because you seem like you 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 right now you higher in the rankings um, than Andre, and you you would have probably a better chance of one of those top fighters in the division right now. Who do, who do you want next? Canelo or Caleb Plant? Okay. Period. Let me have one of them. How how possible is that? How feasible Caleb, is it? Caleb Plant is possible, I think. Uh, Canelo, he got Billy Joe Sanders and on on Cinco de Mayo, so I don't think he's really too much possible right now. But the next fight could be Caleb Plant. I think that's very possible. Okay, and then Andre, what about you? We just wanted to move up the next step of that ladder, man. That's it, man. I've been out since I had my last fight was the end of 2019. Um, I had an injury, a couple of injuries, actually. And uh, I've been working ever since, man. So we're just looking to get back on board. I'll be in the ring really soon. I'm working as we speak. I'm always in shape. So we're seeing what's next, man. But uh, I do have Bottle Jack on my radar. You know what I'm saying? That's one of the guys that I want. That's, def- that's a definite name right there that's – um. Um, going to speak volumes uh, once I get that victory. You know what I'm saying? That, that'll let the crowd know that, okay, he about business for real. Because people be- have their own thoughts on fighters. You know what I'm saying? After a certain amount of time has passed. And for me to show them that I'm serious, I'll get in there with a guy like Badu Jack. So Badu Jack, if you hear this interview, somebody tell you about it, know that it's real. I'm real looking for 
You want Badu Jack because he beat your brother. Want you want Badu Jack because <laughs> he beat your brother. Badu Jack because he beat your brother. The judges <laughs> robbed your brother. The judges <laughs> robbed your brother and gave it to Badu Jack. And you want to reveal it. Badu Jack is a warrior, man. Badu Jack is one and of those is. guys who's going to test you. He is never, he's always going to be an exciting fight. He's always going to bring the pain. You know what I'm saying? So he's a he's a pillar, man. You know, and if I can get past a guy like Bottle Jack, man, I know I'll be taken seriously, man, because I have a lot to prove in this game still. And I want to be able to do that in, in the next two years and be on my way. Mm, I love it. Hey, man, before y'all go, man, I want to ask you something. We we always ask artists, you know, performing artists about their top five. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to ask you about your top five boxers in your opinion. Top five boxers, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. When it comes to morals, when it comes to morals and just uh, uh, personality, everything I'm about, morals, personality, the heart, um, in and out of the ring, and just beast mode, like Ali is going to be number one because okay. of all aspects of life, man, that man is just, he's everything to me. He really is, man. It's our family, honestly, um, from that standpoint. When it comes to technicality and the rawness, I'm definitely going with Floyd Mayweather. I, I was watching him. I watched him in the Marcus Quarter today. It was just fascinating. I'm always fascinated with that man and his abilities. Um, so he's number two. Uh, Sugar Ray Leonard being number three. Mm. Uh, Marvin Hagler, just that dog in him. That's Ooh. something mm. I love. Man, I love watching mm. the, the beast in the ring, Marvin Hagler. And uh, number five, shit, man, I probably ain't thought that far. Damn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I love those four, man. I really do. I got, really I do. got Ali. I got Floyd. I got Sweet Pea. Mm -hmm. There you go. There you go, sweet pea. Yeah, and I got and I got Roy Jones. And Roy Jones. Yeah. Oh, now, yeah, where sure. would you put Clarissa Shields, considering that she's done something no other boxer has done? I think um, she's there. I think she she's definitely at the top. Uh she 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 gotta be the shit number one. She she's she, she, she's she's the best one. woman. When it comes to female fighters, Mr. Fighter. Shields is the best fighter in the world. Which one Period. of the brothers sparred her? Which one of the y'all sparred her? Didn't one of y'all oh. sparred her? <laughs> I just did, I just did eight, rounds. I just did eight rounds with her, man. Hey. Wow. <laughs> eight rounds? <laughs> Listen, man, I, 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 all I got to do is put my hands up and walk forward. And when I tell you, she still makes me fight, man. She hurt me with a body shot. Um, um, The girl is just an animal, man. You can put that, like, I'm physically stronger than her physically bigger and i try to walk her down and wear her out but there's there's no such thing man the girl is a she's a machine mm -hmm. she goes all day man wow. i mean it's unreal that girl's tenacity and just driving the ring man she's another person and ironically man she just told me this i just found this out she hates sparring she hates it with a passion she says she she can't get in the same mode mm. you know she don't take it seriously um so she she does minimal sparring she sparred me and guess who else she sparred? Her coach. Her coach. That was it. <laughs> but it's fine. You know, John David Jackson. Wow. <laughs> wow, man. So, but um, she's a beast. Hey, hey, right now, if we could jump in each one of y'all cars right now, Anthony, Andre, we jump in your car right now. What's the top five songs right now? The five, top top five artists that you have in your playlist right now? <laughs> I got, I got, I, I got Beak on there. I got DMX. I got Jay-Z. Mm -hmm. I got shit. I got John Connor. Ooh. And I got and I got a uh, and I got a uh, shit. I gotta go with Nas, man. Uh, he's he's on there too. Come on, you see big horse. That's a brave heart member right there. You gotta go Nas, man. Come on. Yeah, I, I love Nas. I'm gonna put them all to the side though. All of them. I got respect for a lot of rappers. Like I don't listen to a lot of rap no more. Mm -hmm. Um but one guy who stays on my playlist, man, uh, you know, I die listening to Tupac, man. Pac, <laughs> yes, yes. I love Pac, Pac man. Like, too real, man. Entirely too real. He was definitely for the hood. He was definitely for his people. Uh, you know what I'm saying? He definitely, he was trying to find a way. I believe you killed the mind so powerful. We talk about Pac, man, at, what, 25 when he died? Yeah. Yeah, it's unreal to listen to him and think he was 25 when he died. It's like mm -hmm. you would hear him at 40 and be like, "Damn, that, that man was so grown." You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. he, was, he 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 died too soon for sure, too young. But that was a mind that they had to take out. Conspiracy, yes, that's what I believe. I'm gonna believe that. Take that to my grave. Nobody can convince me. Somebody just decided to kill him because of some biggie beef. 
Mm-hmm. He died because he was too powerful, man. Simple as that. That's my word. Okay. Uh, man, I used to, uh, when he was in the Bay, man, I used to uh, go to, he had a little apartment that he used to have folks hang out at. And um, I used to go over to his apartment, man. This, this was years before, you know, he passed. And years yeah. before he passed, mm-hmm. he used to have sessions where we all be just a bunch of dudes on the couch, man. And this dude is standing up just giving testimony to us and saying the yeah. same things, bro, about yeah. empowerment, about coming yeah. together, about who we are when we're together. Yeah. And this was, we were young, Andre. Like, yeah. it was like, I know. where is this coming from? But um, You yeah. said years before he died. You said years before he died. I was just listening to some shit. He was 21 years old. The mm-hmm. things that come out of, a, uh, out of his mouth at 21 years, it, it's unfathomable, man. It's, it's not, that's not normal. Yeah. As simple as that, man. So, yeah, he was very powerful, man. I read his whole, I read his books. You know, his mother, when he got on punishment, she made him write poems and, you know, learn up on black leaders and whatnot, man. So uh, he had a hard life coming up, but he was very aware. He was very knowledgeable of what was going on this earth. He put it out there. You know, they hide it behind a lot of the raw shit, he say. But truth be told, man, that man had so much knowledge, you know what I'm saying, and about the government, about white versus black and mm-hmm. And at this time, how old would he be today? 40-something, 50-something? Mm-hmm. Man, we have a real leader on our hands, man. Uh, again, yeah. that's yeah. why they had to destroy that, man. But I already know, man, 20 years old, he kicking shit to you that you couldn't even imagine no. now. Like, how is somebody... Nah. If you said with a 20-year-old, you know that shit ain't coming out of their mouth today. Hey, you know what I'm and it made a lot of sense. <laughs> hey, 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 Anthony. Absolutely. Hey, Anthony, with them top five that you just named just now, with them top people that you just named, them five people you just named, if you fighting Canelo, it's a pay-per-view event, everybody's looking. Out of the five, which song and which one of the artists would you have bring you to the ring? John Connor. Ooh, what song is that? Man, he got a lot of them. Yeah, he got a lot. I, I, think, he, I don't think he'd get the respect that he deserve, honestly. I think mm-hmm. he, he, because he's not rapping about dope, drugs, and mm-hmm, girls, mm-hmm. And tripping and he not rapping about that. He rapped about real life events, but mm. he, he he speak, man. When he speak, man, you listen. Mm-hmm. That's just the truth, man. Uh, I, I'm gonna bump him <clears throat> for a long time, bro. Yeah. It's just it's what it is. Uh, but Jay Z in there too. I I bump Jigga all day too. Mm-hmm. Hey, great. Same to you. If you was walking down, the le- who would you bring out? <laughs> who would bring? Who you want to bring? <laughs> Pog man, Pog, Pog, you want to bring him back to life? <laughs> hey, when we ride on my enemies, <laughs> <laughs> we ride on my yeah. enemies. I man, like that. that boy Pog was just too big, too much, man. Too powerful. Wow. Well, listen, mm-hmm. man. I, I want to thank y'all, man, for even being on the being on the show with us, Bridge Business. And yes. you know, I got nothing, both of us, but tremendous respect for you, your boxing knowledge, your your, your legacies are already sealed. You yeah, know, yeah. but I I, I want to see y'all in the big dances. Yeah, yeah. I want to see Andre Me back too. in the big dance, and it's I think coming, it's very man. possible. I yeah. it's coming. And I'm right. promising everybody that's watching right now, it's coming. It's going to happen. I'm not worried about it. Man. I'm staying focused. I'm doing this work. I'm, I'm 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 mentally and physically there right now. So I already know it's coming. No question okay. about it. Okay, and Anthony, man, I know it's coming for you too, man. Next time you get in yeah. that ring, take them out early. Mm-hmm. Oh man, I am. You know that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, All right. All right. I appreciate you guys, man. Give it up for the Durrell brothers.